Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. We're webcasting to you live from the Center for Autism and Related Disorders headquarters in Tarzana, California. And our special guest today, as promised, Mark Serkin. Thank you so much for being here. He Thanks is from, uh, well, it's thrilled to have you here. He's from Autism Speaks, and you are the VP of Social Marketing. So all that digital stuff that yeah. we see all the time, you are the person who is driving that train. I, I am. My, my, uh, my team is actually doing all the hard work. <laughs> Uh, and I get to come on the show and talk about it. But but yeah, we, we have a, a small team of, uh, of amazing amazing people who are dedicated and doing just great digital work. So it's you been really are exciting. doing great digital work. We we vastly appreciate it. But let's talk a little bit about Autism Speaks sure. to start because this is a, a to those of us in the autism community, this is a large organization yes. and one of the largest. And I think a lot of times there's misconceptions about what sure. Autism Speaks is, what they do. So tell us what the mission of Autism Speaks is. Sure. So, you know, in, in simple terms, um, the mission is um, ultimately to find what causes autism mm -hmm. and then to help people deal, deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, the I've been in Autism Speaks three years. It's been an interesting ride. Mm -hmm. I don't come to the autism world um, with a child on the spectrum. I'm not on the spectrum. Um, I didn't have any close friends or anybody who I really knew. And like a lot of people who uh, get introduced to the community, it's a little surprising at how controversial and divisive it can be yeah. at times. Yeah. Uh, I'm still surprised, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but. But um, Autism Speaks, you know, when you look back at um, when it was founded, you know, seven years ago, the story is, the story, of course, is that Susanna Bob Wright's grand um, son is a severely affected uh, right. child with autism. And they really, um, you know, looked around the world and said, there's nobody doing anything yeah. about this, and we need to do something about it yeah. um, at, at a scale that hadn't been done. I, I don't mean to say there weren't autism organizations. There were a lot. Right. But nobody had figured out how to scale it up. Right, exactly. Um, and so, you know, uh, the, the history is the history, right? Cure Autism Now and NAR and, and all the mergers and all those things, and we find ourselves seven years later. And the way I describe, um, you know, again, at a simple level, the Autism Speaks mission is there's, we have four pillars. We, we talk about these things right. all the time, right? There's research um, and, and really looking at all of the elements of science behind autism yeah. and the genetics and, and the um, you know, the etiology, all, all the stuff that goes behind that. The family services mm -hmm. component, which is growing, probably not growing fast enough, mm -hmm. uh, truthfully, but it's growing. And yeah. today, that's primarily digitally delivered, right, so our website and mm -hmm. content, the 100-day kit and those kinds of things. But as we grow our platform and we expand with chapters and more walks, right, we can start to deliver that sort of content locally. So family services is going to continue to be a really important and big part of, of, our, of our mission. Advocacy um, ultimately is, you know, it turns out to be really important because without insurance, I mean, it, and you, yeah. can, you really can't understate it. Exactly. Um, how important it's been. So we've managed to get 31 states to do insurance reform, and now, of course, we're fighting with those 31 states to keep the insurance reform. Yes. And we've, we work with the federal government with, through um, a consortium and partnerships across not just the autism spectrum, but the disability spectrum to get, to get this work done, this yeah. you know, billions of dollars done. And then ultimately, the awareness work that we've done um, through the Ad Council and through our own marketing efforts, you know, has, I think, taken autism, say, from 10 years ago to where we are today. It's on everyone's lips. We're, we're all talking yes. about it. Now, you know, we can talk later. We can debate about how we're talking about it. Yeah. Um, but the, the truth is that I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm proud to say that Autism Speaks put autism on the map. Now, we've got to continue to evolve that. And the yeah. way I talk about our mission ultimately is, is in, in, the, in the grand scheme, in the grand arc of the story of autism in our, mm -hmm. in our society, you know, we're still at the very beginning. Yeah. Um, and if you look at other disorders and diseases, uh, whether it be civil rights movement or say breast cancer, these things all had an arc. Yeah. Some of them took 60 or 100 years. Yeah. You know, the women's rights issues took you know, oh. uh, more than 100 years, right? <laughs> so I think when you put it, when you start to put things in that perspective, it becomes a much more subtle and interesting story. Uh, and and I, find it, I find it to be uh, not just intellectually stimulating, but also something that keeps me going every day in terms of coming yeah. to work and trying to do what we do uh, yeah. to help the community. Well, I, I have to say, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And uh, you know, what was just shocking to me, what you just said when you said seven years, yeah. because I don't think I've ever really put it together before that that's how long, that's how long ago my son was diagnosed. Right. So I think it was probably on like my 30th day that I heard Autism Speaks. Sure. And I guess I didn't realize that it hadn't been around a whole lot of time before that. Right. Um, 
In fact, I remember the first time I heard Autism Speaks mentioned, it was on Donald Trump's show. Sure. Um, oh, the they were, Apprentice, the Celebrity yes, Apprentice, the right? Celebrity right. Apprentice, and they were doing a uh, fundraiser, and a woman was talking. My son hadn't been diagnosed; he was about to be diagnosed, oh, and they were, and she was saying, you know, some of these parents don't know if their child is ever going to say "I love you." Right. And I remember, which, by the way, is a really oh so. I emotional. mean, that's a t that's a tough one to sort of just mm -hmm. understand and say as a oh. parent. I, I get that. It's, yeah, it's hard. And we were at that moment where we were, he was losing language and I, you know, and right. I felt that squeeze and I thought, okay, I think it's time we need to, I don't know that much about this autism thing, but maybe right. we need to ask some questions. Sure. It was a pivotal moment for me. But I, I think all my, uh, this entire experience, I've been thinking that Autism Speaks was around a lot longer before A lot of people that. do. So that's very uh, interesting to me. But in seven years, you guys have accomplished a lot. I think so. Of course, there's much more to be done. Endless. And and we all we all get that. But where we have gone in insurance reform alone, if we were to only talk about that, yeah. and what and we talk all the time, autismvotes.org. Correct. How important it is that people stay in tune with what's happening Absolutely. in their state and and in other people's states and support. It's life changing at this. It point. is, and just you know, not not to not to um, shill off autism votes we're actually rebuilding the website i know the team's working on that now but we've got uh you can text uh, i think it's a votes to 30644 and get on we'll actually figure out where you are in the country Wonderful. and so when we activate locally we can let you know and engage that way through email and social media and all those kinds of things but yeah i mean that movement that autism votes votes movement has been um probably one of the most critical things we've done and a lot of people don't even know that we're behind it and right. you know this is not about getting credit this is about actually getting insurance reform exactly um, so it's just an it's interesting you bring that up because i think that is one of those important things that life-changing yeah. and and you know it's not there yet i mean we, we have many more states to go yeah. but the fact that we can say to some families when they call in, you know, what do I do? And my first Correct. question has to be, where are you in the world? Right. right? I hate that part of it. Yeah. But what's lovely is that for some people I can say, well, you know, in some respects, you just won the autism lottery. Right. You have access to insurance today. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, that you can get ABA and a lot of it without having to pay a whole lot out. Yeah. 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 Important. Um, but also, and you, you <clears throat> mentioned very briefly the 100-day kit. Sure. And I I don't think that that gets talked about enough that if somebody if you're newly diagnosed and you go to autismspeaks.org mm -hmm. and you have a whole tab for newly diagnosed yeah. and you give away free kits for the first hundred days we do we and we have a, a list of kits including not just the 100 day kit but things like the high functioning uh, mm -hmm. asperger's kit a dental kit a school community kit and one of the things that my team is working on which i think is exciting and we did we took the 100 day kit and we took the um as the hfa kit we put them in a partnership with barnes and noble you can, if you have a Nook or the mm -hmm. Nook app, you can down directly download awesome. from Barnes and Noble. You also, if you go to our website, can download it in any ebook format. So if you have an iPad, right. you can download, you know, the EPUB file or whatever it is, and put right. it right in. So we're really now focusing on how we disseminate this content, partnerships, um, distribution through mobile, that all of that stuff to put wonderful. this content in people's hands, like you guys do with Autism Live, right. which is great. Well, that's wonderful because you used to be you had to wait for it to come in the mail, right. but now you can get it in instant <laughs> gratification. Love that. Exactly. All right. Well, we should take a little short break, but when we come back, I want to talk to you about some of the blogs that sure. you've written recently. I want to talk about hacking autism and about inclusion in technology because you wrote a really spectacular blog about that. So we're going to take a short break and come back with Mark Serkin from Autism Speaks. Stick with us. Welcome back to Autism Live. Our special guest this morning is Mark Serkin from Autism Speaks. He is the VP of Social Marketing, so all that digital stuff, all that digital content that we see, and there's a great deal of it. You're doing an awesome job. Yes, thank you. Um, it, that's all coming from your office. Mostly. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the blogs that you've been writing. Um, it seems to me that you are a technology guy. Would that be a fair assessment? I think so. Okay. You could call me a geek if you like. I don't want to go offended. there. Yeah, I didn't wanna, um, But one of the, the first blog that you wrote that really got my attention was one about inclusion sure. and technology. You went to visit a school. Tell us a little bit about where you went. So uh, in partnership with HP last October, we did uh, an event called Hacking Autism, right. which was a, a, a sort of a corporate hackathon. Um, to try to build some applications for uh, mobile devices for, mm -hmm. for autism. And uh, I met these amazing people um, mm -hmm. at the Hope Technology School in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that um, that school is really built on these like, fascinating models of inclusion. And I had never just never, never seen anything like this before. I mean, I, again, I don't have a kid on the spectrum. And right. so I'm not in this world on a daily basis. So um, 
the the partner so through the hacking autism uh, there's a documentary called I want to say which I by the way need to get you a copy yeah, of yeah um, do Goodby Silverstein and Partners produced a film that started out as uh, kind of a, a way to show the world what HP was working on okay uh, but it turns out that they just decided it was such a powerful story they just kind of removed HP and just told the story so it's okay. this amazing story of these these five kids many of those kids who attend the Hope Technology School All right. so long story short I ended up uh, in San Francisco for the premiere of the film mm -hmm. at, at Lucas Arts which by the way I mean yeah, oh my god I can't even I have pictures of me with Darth Vader. It's great. Um, <laughs> but, um, okay, officially you are a geek exactly. now. That's now yeah, you're I, you, I was going to get that one way or another. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so anyway, so uh, so the next day I had asked uh, if I could visit the school, and I went down there with with a guy from Stanford University. We got a tour and and talked to the teachers and the and the executive director Gail and. Uh, her husband Russ and one of, uh, his his boy Jordan is actually in the film uh -huh. um, using an AAC device to communicate. In fact, he's published in uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul or something. Okay. Like, you know, so just this Wonderful. amazing. So I heard you talking about Carly. Uh, yes. Plays, it's like you know, unbelievable yeah. story. So uh, so I find myself at this school and I really was moved. I just I, I you know I have two um, neurotypical children, two daughters, and uh, I just was thinking to myself. I mean, the first literally the first question I asked was why do why would parents with typical kids want to send their children to yeah. this school, and the answers were amazing. And the, the enrichment that comes from that and the thinking behind um, inclusion just kind of blew me away. And that's where that, that is where that blog post came from, that experience that day that I had. Uh, and I just, I, I really just found it to be uh, just very enlightened. And, you know, it's interesting, and people should read the blog. And where can they find the blog? It's on, uh, so we, we actually, it's on autismspeaks.org. And if you can't find it, you can tweet us and we can, we can send you the link. Okay. Uh, we moved blogs from WordPress to another site so it may have gotten lost in translation okay. uh, but it's somewhere on our site okay and uh, and it is it's a, it's a really incredible blog about how moving it was but you mentioned that they have some models there that they work on and some basic premises that they work on about the very idea yeah. that not only is it going to be beneficial to the kids who are being included but for the neurotypical peers Absolutely. that are there and what kinds of things did you see there that uh, that you said as a parent you were thinking why would anybody want to do this? What did you see that was so inspiring? You know, I saw I saw and was told about things like project work sitting yeah. at a computer together and yeah. working on an iPad together yeah. and the idea of that um, you know, there's a, there's a charitable aspect of that that you know you sort of like you know I can work at a soup kitchen or I can and, and that all that's all very good There's nothing wrong with that, but the idea of collaborating um, you know, neurotypical and typical kids, mm -hmm. um, or kids with autism, together uh, in an environment where learning is the core of it. Yeah, it, I think is fascinating. I really, I mean, I was truly moved and blown away by what those people are trying to do at the school. They told me all sorts of stories about how some of the kids who had graduated had gone on to, you know, lead. Um, programs at high schools for, for inclusion and create other wow. opportunities. Just, I mean, and again, I think it's easy to overlook the power of what they're doing mm -hmm. um, and sort of dismiss it as, you know, maybe a one-off or something that not a lot, but but I just I just found it to be, um, like I said, moving. It was, it was important. And I, you know, because I, I know that around the world, people are talking about inclusion yeah. and, and people are on both sides of the argument uh, saying, and, and in the community and not in the community saying inclusion, not inclusion, but when it works well, yeah. um, it it is, I think, amazing. Well, there's a, there's a huge amount of research um, around diversity. So mm -hmm. if you put a, inclusion away for a minute and you mm -hmm. just look at diversity and you look at the performance of teams who have diverse members, mm -hmm. uh, and then you bring inclusion back in and you say, well, if you've got a person on the spectrum or with some disorder or disability mm -hmm. or disease, it doesn't matter, yeah. and they have capability and you put them on a team, that is diversity. Right, and I so I'm I don't know that I'm right about that, but I feel like I am. I yeah. feel like that's the kind of the same story, and I, I think I do. I agree. Um, you know, at Autism Speaks, we have a lot of different people who work. We have people, you know, like me who who work there for different reasons, not because I have a personal connection, but we have lots of parents and lots of people uh, on the spectrum who work with us in different um, capacities. And I always find it to be interesting to get those perspectives. Yeah. In fact, we have a we have a girl, um, a woman. Sorry, I shouldn't say girl. Uh, a woman <laughs> on our team who uh, her brother has autism, and mm -hmm. she is our. She is our so she when you see everything on digital and so Allie's out there I know she's watching okay um, she does the Facebook and the Twitter and all that oh, stuff wonderful. her brother I mean I've learned so much from just sitting and listening to her talk about her family and her brother and the relatives and sort of how the whole family structure works mm -hmm. um, that it that you really start to go well, there's something there's really something to this and you want that yeah. perspective yeah you need that perspective well and I think likewise I think it's important to get your perspective because I live so much you know please I have lots of friends who don't have children on the spectrum sure. but I live a lot in this world and and look at people and I don't know anymore how yeah. somebody who doesn't have a child right. with autism thinks and so for you to say I went there and wondered 
why would somebody want to send their neurotypical right. child here? I need to hear that as yeah. a parent because that's part of what I have to address Correct. with my son. Um, so I think it's important that we all, you know, you talk about diversity. I need your diversity. And I think it is important for people who don't have children on the spectrum to be on our teams as well. Agree. Um, so I am, I appreciate your input and you do have a different place that you're coming from that I think is valid yeah. to our community. Hope so. I hope so too. Uh, and I hope that people look at it that way. But you <laughs> mentioned that hacking autism. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that because this is fascinating to me. Who came up with this idea? So the, guy, the guy's name, uh, his name is Phil McKinney and he was the HP CIO okay. uh, in the Consumer Products Group. Um, in December, he left HP, and uh, we had a discussion, and Autism Speaks ended up owning Hacking Autism. So I actually am okay. the owner of the thing, whatever it is, and whatever we turn it into, <laughs> okay. which is debatable, uh, and interest, but interesting. Um, and so... And exciting, I think. Very, very exciting, uh, and very interesting. And I've spent, you know, gosh, probably the last four or five months thinking about what, what is it? What could it be? Yeah. And I've come up with uh, a couple of different ideas in some different directions that I want to take it, you know, at a very simple level, it's a hackathon program. So it's a way for developers to get, come together with the autism community and build stuff, whatever that stuff okay. is. Could be mobile apps, could be um, web applications. I don't know, I don't care, but what I've done is I've harnessed um, experts in the community to tell me what problems need to be solved. Right. Um, and now I'm trying to figure out how to connect the development world to those problems. So it's like a challenge. It you know, can, here's, it, here's this yes. thing that's going on in our real lives. What could you invent technology-wise that could make this better, better or fix it? Correct. Which I think is exciting. Uh, it's, it's, what a great question to be asking. It, it's, it's one of those things where you go, that's the right question. It so is. now where's the answer? Right. Well, and you're starting to get people thinking of it, yeah. which that's got to be the right direction. And has anything come from it that really has made a substantive difference yet, or is it going to take a little time? I don't more think time? so. I think it's going to take time. And I think part of what part of what I'm starting to really realize is it's not about apps. Right? There's lots of apps, and right. we can talk about what good apps, bad apps, yeah. apps that work, apps that don't work. Um, what it's really about is understanding, you know, the person on the spectrum, where they are, what they need, and how can technology help them. So Absolutely. you look at this, you know, Google's got this Google Glass thing, right? I don't know if you've heard about this, but I it's like not. it's like glasses that are connected to the internet all the time. Oh. And you think about the impact of that if that was real and it worked the way they say it'll work. And right. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But if you're a person with autism and you have trouble with, let's say, facial recognition, mm -hmm. or you have trouble in social situations, and but you're good on, let's say, just as an example, you, you have lots of people you know on Facebook right. and Twitter. And you put these glasses on and you walk into a crowded room and the glasses could tell you, well, that's Joe from Facebook. Uh, right? That, there's, a door, there's a doorway right. to social success through that just yes. one simple, simple example. Yeah. So what I've really started to think about is what I call the applied technology. So how can we take the technologies that exist uh, like filmmaking, uh, like art, 3D modeling, computer programming, game design, you name it. Mm -hmm. And how can we build partnerships through Hacking Autism with companies that do those kinds of things to yeah. provide parents and people on the spectrum an opportunity to learn about those things? Because not everybody knows. Yeah. You know, just as an example, uh, there's, a, there's a company in uh, Dallas called Nonpareil. I'll, I'll give, them, give them a shout out. They, uh, <laughs> they are a, a mind-blowing organization. They're a nonprofit organization that hires uh, adults on the spectrum to wow. create video games that they sell for profit. Lovely. I mean. Gotta love that. You gotta love that, right? And they have all these amazing partnerships. They do all this amazing work, and they've adapted uh, game development and design principles from a, from a school that they sort of slowed down appropriately uh -huh. to get these um, autistics into the into the program. And it's, it, it is really, I find it to be one of those things like, you go, know, wow, that's amazing. If they can do that, what else can we do with technology? Right. Absolutely. It is kind of endless. And I think once you ask the right question, a yeah. lot of great minds can then say, all right, what what can we do about this? Uh, you open up the discussion. It's a, a fascinating thing. So y y is there a time period that the hackathon happens? Is it, or well, is right, it ongoing? It's ongoing. And what I've done is we, there are companies that are doing their own internal hacks. There's a company in, I think they're in Chicago. Um, I help them spec out and design an application that they're building. It's like an emotion recognition design with a game engine behind cool. it. Really cool. And so they're doing that as an employee morale building effort. They're a software company and they wanted to find something to do. So they've got a hackathon going on, kind of ongoing. It's a three, four month project. Nice. I'm also working and I, you know, I can't, I, I really, I won't say the name of it, but there's an event in New York coming up in the fall okay. that I would like to do a hack. Okay. Um, I'm working with a, a, a very well-known university that has a robotics platform uh, that's open source. And we're talking about doing a hackathon at this event in New York in the fall to bring okay. some specific developers together. So I'm being very opportunistic about it right now because uh, I don't want to overcommit in any one direction. But I also, 
want to be able to tell stories about, you know, for example, the work that uh, University of Utah is doing with Google SketchUp, oh. formerly Google SketchUp, they sold the software, but 3D modeling, um, they create a program called Project Spectrum that, you know, probably parents don't necessarily know about, but you can Google Project Spectrum, okay. and um, you can introduce your child to 3D modeling, Ooh. free software. Right? And they may like it, they may not. That's not the issue, but the My exposure. Son would love that. So you should have him check oh, that out. Yeah. And there's a whole curriculum and a whole program. Um, and so I see this stuff happening. And I think what, what I love about working at Hudson Speaks is we have a big, we have a big voice. So I can tell yeah. people about it. I can come on the show or we can yes. put it on our Absolutely. website. And so I think exposing people to all those things is becoming part of what hacking autism is as well. Well, Mark, I just want to crawl inside your head and because you know all these things that, that are very exciting to me. <laughs> I just want to pick and choose and go, all right, we would like to pull that file out. Uh, very exciting. All right, we're going to take another short break. We're going to come back for another segment with Mark and talk about, you know, you're a big organization, so sometimes you take some hits. Sure. Uh, they're, they're big in the controversy. We'll talk a little bit about that, so stick with us more with Mark Serkin from Autism Speaks after these messages. Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. I'm here with Mark Serkin from Autism Speaks. You're the VP of social marketing, all that digital great stuff that you guys are doing. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, and, and tell us a couple of places where people can be looking. Your YouTube channel, I have great envy. It's wonderful. Do you? I oh, do. Good. It's good. fabulous. Yes. It's absolutely fabulous. Awesome. Um, uh, so they can go and find your YouTube channel. Sure. And wh where else can they be looking to see some of the digital stuff that you guys? Yeah, I mean going? the main the main place is autismspeaks.org, obviously, and there's links to our Facebook page and our Twitter and um, our YouTube and um, LinkedIn. We're on LinkedIn now, so uh -huh. you know we can do that. Um, and there's actually mobile apps now. I just we just released mobile apps. So there's an Android app and an iOS app, not an iPad, unfortunately yet. Um, but it has all of our news feeds, uh, our YouTube okay. content is in there, and Great. so just lots of ways to stay in touch with us. Uh, sign up on email, um, okay. you know, we, we make it easy to stay in touch with us, okay, if, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> well, absolutely. And I also mentioned uh, autismvotes.org. Yeah. You know, you guys, I tell you to go there all the time and check and see where you're at uh, in terms of autism insurance reform. Absolutely. Um, but I mentioned before the break that you guys are a big organization in the world of autism, yep. one of the biggest, and you are uh, the center of a lot of discussion, a lot of it great, a lot of parents who appreciate and, and follow you guys closely, and you get some criticism from time to time. Um, I do. <laughs> I've noticed. And, and, and it turns out most of it's on social media. Yes. How <laughs> does that work? Do you get a lot of heat at work for that? No, I wouldn't say heat. I mean, we, we talk a lot about how and when to respond to, to things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, but it's and especially lately, you guys have been the subject of a lot of controversy. It goes in waves. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> and uh, but uh, you know, how does how do you guys deal with that in terms of morale? Um, you know, how much of it do you listen to? And and do Question. you have any response to it? Well, you know, you know, I think it does affect morale, and mm -hmm. I think that people come to the organization and work for us for all sorts of different reasons. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, so it can be tough at times. I mean, I, I would say, uh, in our defense, uh, some of it is unwarranted, and I would say uh, to our detriment that some of it's self-inflicted. Okay. You know, I think that, you know, one of the interesting things, and I and I I talk about this a lot. Uh, now I'm about to talk about it on the air, so that'll be the first time. Okay. But one of the things I talk about a lot is is what I consider uh, a fairly significant fault line within the within the autism community, which yeah. is the distinction of it being a medical issue and a civil rights issue. Yeah. And it's a tough one. It is. Right. Tough. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I I completely sympathize uh, and empathize and understand uh, the self advocate community. It makes complete sense to me. Yeah. I get it. But I also understand that uh, parents have a right to grieve and, and parents have a right to want uh, a better life for their kids. Mm -hmm. um, it's a complicated issue. Yeah, it you is. Know, it's just, and I, and I, I don't mean that to sound like an excuse, like, oh, no. that, I don't think that gets anybody off the hook. But I do think, I talked about earlier the kind of arc of Autism Speaks, and I think autism has an arc as well. And I would argue that we're kind of in the middle of that arc. Yeah, you know, I, I think agree. that, And I, you know, I, I, always, I, I always like to talk about, you know, um, I'm old enough to remember, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember, you know, the, the, the gay rights movement 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, Glee is a, is a pretty amazing show. Yeah. Uh, and you can like it or not, but it's national dialogue. It's global dialogue. Yeah. And I don't think autism's quite there yet, but right. we're close. And I, really, I, I do believe that. And I think it's going to be... Um, to everyone's benefit, the faster we can kind of turn that wheel and get that Absolutely. get that to where it needs to be, and I do think that's where a lot of the 
controversy, unfortunately, um, comes from. Yeah. I, I said to somebody the other day, they were talking about, because we've had multiple controversies with people saying things recently, 50 yeah. Cent, oh, Joe yeah. Scarborough, oh, yeah. and, and somebody who doesn't have a child on the spectrum said, man, those, you autism parents, boy, you get hepped up, you, you get, get angry. <laughs> right. And I said, you know, I... I I want you to understand that we have so much, our question of the day today is what are you resentful about, right? Great question. Um, and we have so much to grieve. We have so much to be resentful about, so much anger that we can't channel right. uh, enough in different places that are productive. And so if you give us something to get angry about, boy, we hone in on that like yeah. crazy, don't we? Um, <laughs> so, and I, you know, I feel it sometimes here, yeah. you know, that we always ask for criticism here and sometimes we get it. And I always try to remember, you know, that it's coming from a place of the people who have a lot on their plate, yeah. a lot on their plate, and this is an emotional issue. It is. And, and it's a huge, big spectrum, and to be able to talk to all people at all times, I just don't know that it's possible. It is, and, and there is no, you know, there's no silver bullet, and there's right. no uh, there's no easy answer to any of these things. But yeah, I mean, 50 Cent uh, and Joe Scarborough both said things that they shouldn't have said. Yeah. And, you know, whether they apologize or not is not really the issue, I don't think. And this kind of dro drove our response to give you an insight into that controversy. I mean, I think that ultimately we need to continue to drive the dialogue yeah. at high levels. And so arguing with 50 Cent over whether or not he should say things like that, I mean, you know, there is an argument to be made that we should yell and scream and stamp our feet. There's an also argument to be made that there's a bigger picture and that we need to keep right. working at that level. Well, you know, my response was that he should write a series of checks. Oh, we agree. And I, and I encouraged him to give one to Autism Speaks and well, with some you. other wonderful <laughs> organizations that are out there, to the Holly that. Rod Foundation. Absolutely. Absolutely. to the art of autism, to the special needs network, and to autism care and treatment today, if you're watching, Mr. Scent. Yes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> he's not. Unfortunately, he's not. And again, that's, that is part of the issue. Yes. Yes, and, and we and we asked people who would you like to see if he were going to write a check, who would you like for him to write a check to? And many people wrote it and said, as much as I would like for him to write a check, I would like for him to have to go work, do community service hours for some of those organizations so that he could see firsthand. I kind of liked that idea too, but I like the check too. Checks are good. Because how much difference can a million dollars make to even an organization such as yourself? A lot, quite a, a lot. lot. How many lives can it impact? I agree. A, an, an amazing amount. Well, Mark, I want to thank you for being thank here you. and for writing the things that you're writing about and for giving us lots of content and information that we're excited to keep watching at Autism Speaks. It's my pleasure. It's a great uh, show. And let us know anytime you have something that we can be talking about because you know a lot. I'm fascinated. Uh, Thank you. <laughs>